I call you Pete North. Pete, come in a prayer and a good to the flag. <clears throat> Father, we come to you. Thank you this morning. Father, we ask now that you give us the, the knowledge and the wisdom to make decisions that, that will best serve our students and schools in Libby County. Father, we also ask that for journey mercies on board members in Travel Tallahassee this week. Father, thank you for loving us. Father, we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs>
Um, we're adding GPA in the next week or so. We had to work through that filter. There were a couple glitches, and an additional filter I've requested is a cohort because the guidance counselors, when I'm out with them, brought up the fact that we need that cohort. So we know those kids that are in and in ninth grade are staying with their group for graduation purposes. Are there any? Your cohort when they enter ninth grade, okay. we get a graduation rate, which with the new proposed school grading, that's going to be this graduation rate is your four year. So those students that start ninth grade together, we need to graduate together. Okay, so, so that that will not necessarily be a uh, maybe I'll just I'm working on that filter. Morning. Yeah, that's going to be just an additional okay. filter so we can okay. see because if you pull up ninth grade now. It's going to give you every ninth grade, but some of those ninth graders might actually be need to be tenth graders. This is restricted for high school. It's for all grade levels because in elementary you want to capture those right. kids that are absent a lot because it affects their test grades, whether they pass their grade level. Okay, how about needs from, from uh, acronym what SWD? Students with disabilities. Okay, how about LEP? Um, our ELL kids. And we don't have economically disadvantaged. It shows all of our students because we're 100% free lunch. Right. Okay, thank you. Are we anticipating, I've, I've seen the um, um, academic areas, course failures and state testing. Are we anticipating additional filters a little farther down toward the classroom level? The course failures should do that. Um, like if they have two, you can put two course failures, one course failure. When you open up course failures, it gives you a, a choice. For example, like absences gives you, you know, if you've got to have the students there 10% of the time each semester for them to actually not to fall into that early morning system. And you can filter by the amount of absences within a term or for the year to date. Maybe I'm looking for the pie in the sky portion of it that would take it before they fail the class or before they do poorly on the state testing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Is, well, the question that I have though was, is that a possibility of adding those filters down the road? I don't, we don't, we just export their term grades to them so no, they don't have the running tab of our grade books on okay. there and I don't okay. foresee them doing that. That's your whole that's data right. warehouse. Well, to, me, to me it still is a, is a great tool mm -hmm. to use, but to me, it could be even greater if those possibilities were there. Yeah, there, there's other, I, I mean, what this is set up for is not particularly what you're asking, but we have other, right. with the baseball cards and, and the lists and, the, mm -hmm. you know, given that, that, that should give the teacher the ability to focus in on the standards that those kids are missing, what they score low in. And so, through performance matters, there's other, ways that teachers can find that out, but not in this particular case. And right now, that's that's still great from what I'm yeah. And right now the filter is just giving names and the roadmap will start giving us that data and we can actually pick, you know, choose the, the um, state data. But what's very nice about this, especially when you think about high school guidance and middle school guidance, <clears> is that it's forced to Excel. So you can update your Excel instead of having to hand type in all this information, you can export it into Excel. That makes it very easy for, for the schools. And this also helps when we do reporting on the schools. The school improvement plan now has the early warning system that you've got to report on. And this will help the schools in reporting that. And then we have to do that as a district as well. So this will be done at the level? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And hopefully, like I said, we're kind of working through the bugs because this has just been out in the last couple of weeks. And that when the teachers start using it, we've got all those bugs cleaned out and they're able to use it um, with authentic reliability. This summer, once Barb has a chance to go to it, filter out students' names and get, uh, you know, real adapted using it, she'll do a demonstration for y'all. Will they be able to talk with Skyward? We get all our data from Skyward. So the file layouts all upload nightly from Skyward Performance Matters. Can't emphasize enough how much how important this is with the new proposed high school grading system. Last year, there was a five year cohort rate. The proposed is for four years only. Every district in the state has asked them to really look at that and give and hopefully make a change to that, co uh, that four year graduation rate. Because that's going to impact 
high school grades, it's going to impact our graduation rate at, the, at our district level. So if that's something that you can talk with folks this week is the, the new proposed high school grading. Remember, we have three A's and one B. Um, that's higher than most districts, even though there were more A's and B's. Part of that was we had the five-year cohort rate, and we were capturing some of those points through that. This is going to put a lot of pressure on guidance counselors to make sure they get to the finish line in four years. No, there will be no clauses. It's just either you're, you graduate in four years or you don't. And that's going to be a lot harder um, on high schools. Even though we know we want our students to graduate in four years, there are those that don't. That don't run all their credits in time, that don't pass all the assessments in time. This is going to help us track those students. And that only tracks from when they hit ninth grade. So like a kid that repeated his first grade or anything like that, it starts in grade. But for the elementary, we are trying to get um, great, um, failures. The issue has been the way Skyward, the way it's displayed in Skyward, they, I have a guy at NEFAC that actually will get the file layouts for me. And so far it's showing that we have no kids that have been retained because it's only capturing kids this year and we haven't completed the year. So we're trying to, he's trying to dig into their system deeper to find that place to turn it on to get it to upload to performance matters. Any other questions? Like I said, like Mr. Hastings said, hopefully um, we'll do a demonstration this summer and I can show you this, but not, but not only that, but how you can, the teachers and schools can look at data on performance matters for their Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Pam, is there any uh, addition or correction to the minutes? Uh, let's see. We do have a change of the minutes. No, so they're fine. They're fine. Any questions on the minutes? Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor, please take the step by signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Minutes are approved. Consent agenda. Yes, there is a couple of changes on page one of the consent agenda. Number one, A. Um, folks that have changes. Number one, Mar Mar Maria Garcia. She's actually at Summit. So that's, it should say Summit Academy School is on A. And then number four, Brenda J. Foreman. Um, she's actually exiting the block. It's not just a resignation. And that's all. All right. Mr. Adams. I'm not sure I'll have anything. Mr. Coward. Yes, sir. Mr. Brooklyn. I don't have any Thank you. Mr. Uh The addition to, <coughs> I presume, we're just going to go ahead and ask a question anyway, that uh, general items in the addition consent agenda A, personnel change recommendations, like uh, numbers 8 and 9. Uh, buses still have to roll and we still have to feed the kids, so we will either be substitute bus drivers or either have already started or we'll begin looking replacements. Right. Okay. So just, just look at those our ball dates for those people who do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have no, uh, no comment or questions. Do so I hear a motion to approve this consent agenda? Perfect. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor, all in favor please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. The agenda has been approved. Uh, what's next on the agenda here? <laughs> That'd be you, <laughs> Mr. Superintendent. <clears throat> I want to call your attention to the uh, to the care here handout that I, I gave to each of y'all. This was put together by Don Turner. Mm -hmm. And uh, our staff and Don and the rest of the uh, staff meet with them every week to get updates on how things are going. And uh, overall, I think that it's going to extremely, extremely well. And of course, we will have a glitch or two here or there and need to tweak something, which we've done. Uh, but overall, you can see we're they're seeing about 100 people a week. There's two weeks worth here to purchase second page. And uh, they're seeing about 100 
people a week, and uh, and I think that that's amazing uh, what they're doing out there. We have a few no-shows, and we're trying to get the information out that if a person's going to break their appointment, they need to notify so that we can fill it in because there's somebody else that wants that time slot. So that's uh, one of the little uh, snafus that we need to work on. There's also a, a comment summary in which you can see uh, most of the comments are very positive. People are very happy that that we have gone to this plan. Uh, still, the world of insurance, uh, not to be talking about anybody personally, but the world of health insurance, let's put it that way, uh, is up in the air and nobody knows what will hit us next year and uh, everybody's concerned about, about their medical care and their, their health insurance and uh, and we certainly uh, uh, share in those concerns. But you can go through there and read about the comments from, from the people. And then we included the, uh, for, for you to see the uh, wellness letter and newsletter and uh, some of the things that are addressed in it. And uh, I think it's a, a wonderful avenue to try to keep people healthy. Uh, you know, just like children, if children aren't there, the teachers can't teach them. But if the teachers aren't there, they can't teach them any. So, you know, it's very important that we keep teachers in the classroom and, and doing their job. Anybody have any questions or comments about the wellness centers? I certainly want to commend the people that worked very hard to put this together and try to help our employees from that standpoint and our retirees. Just from my perspective though, uh, every time there's a visit over there it has, has been pounded into me. Every time there is a visit over there, one less visit that we would be um, referring to we call Blue Shield. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, and that's going to be helpful in the long run. And one of the things I think people are, are enjoying the most is, uh, is the say drugs, but drugs, uh, pharmaceutical prescriptions. prescriptions, thank you. Uh, you know, pe people are really excited about that. I, I know I've got a, a grandson that needs a lot of medical care, and uh, and the cost of his prescriptions has more than paid for the premium that is being paid by the family. So, you know, overall, I think it's been very beneficial for people. That's good. Yeah. This is, is a legislative week and y'all are going to Tallahassee to participate in that and I thank you very much for uh, what you do and to go and try to lobby on behalf of our, our schools and our students and uh, I think that's a wonderful thing and, uh, and so I encourage you to do it. Also fair week, we've got a lot of kids enjoying uh, the fruits of their labor of uh, taking care of animals and displaying them or, or their home uh, type uh, exhibits and uh, we're, we're very proud of the work and effort that our, our kids do. I pray for their safety and their well-being while there but uh, I think that it's well run and, and that uh, the kids are really uh, experiencing something that will benefit them throughout life. The other uh, thing which we sent out notices yesterday and y'all received them from other messages too is that our Department of Education has finally selected a test that will be administered to our students next year for this coming year and uh, of course that creates a lot of concern because it's the unknown. They've selected the American Institute of Research or the acronym AIR and of course, that conjures up a lot of thoughts in your mind about airheads and so on and so forth. But Michael Jordan. Sir? Michael Jordan. It does. And I have a hard time not saying here Jordan test. But <laughs> anyway, uh, that is a, a test that's being kind of put together by a couple of <coughs> different uh, venues. And, and, uh, 
Of course, these are the same people that put together this park test. So, you know, we we got the governor said we're not going to get a park test, but the same people that make park tests are making this test. So, you know, whatever. Uh, they got a two hundred twenty million dollar contract over six years, and if my math is correct, that's thirty six point six million a year. But it's a nonprofit organization where people are paid very well, and uh, but there's no profit given right back to a corporation or you know. But people work there are paid very well. Do uh, we don't really have to believe that, do we? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, well, they're not paid with. No, they're non-profit. <laughs> The, the people that work there get a profit, <laughs> but, but there's there's no uh, stockholders or stocks is the difference, I guess. Right. But that's cheaper than the fifty million that they were paying for the FCAT test. So, so there you go. Anyway, for you, but I don't to be a Wilson High School. That's true. Anyway, and that test will be effective this coming year, 14, 15. 14, 15. And which brings up the next concern I have. It is field tested in Utah this year. If the test hasn't even made, been set yet, they're going to field test it in Utah. Totally different demographics than we have here in Florida. We were asking this morning if they got camels in Utah. I don't know. Go back to the old test. <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, to field test in Utah this year, to create the test this year, you know, those, those are, are big concerns of mine. I, I do not think that it's right to give, to be testing kids for the purpose of evaluating teachers. I have a real problem with that type of scenario. Uh, what, this is what I believe, and then y'all can take it for whatever it's worth. But all these standardized tests and all, I don't have a problem with them publicizing it, put it in the newspaper, the district scores, and even the, the school scores. Hold the district accountable for making sure that that the schools have what they need to teach our kids. Hold the schools accountable for making sure they are teaching our kids like they should. But then it's the principal's responsibility to make sure that those teachers are teaching. Not the general public's responsibility. It's that principal, the administrator of that school's responsibility. And so that, that principal should have the background, the, the knowledge, the attributes to determine whether those teachers are doing an adequate job or not. And so that part is, a, is always a real kind of thorn in my, my side with where we're going with all this testing. We are doing too much testing and we've beaten that horse to death and it's still, it's still riding. So I don't think there's much we can do about all that. Anyway, uh, I, I wish y'all much success in Tallahassee this this week. Uh, our legislatures and all, we need to thank them for for uh, what they do for getting the Wilson Middle High School uh, funded. And uh, you know, and I feel very comfortable and confident in that, uh, even though we're not at the end of the legislative session. When you have the governor pushing for it. And it's in his budget. DOE has approved it. It's in their budget. Uh, the Senate has approved it. It's in their budget. The House of Representatives have approved it. It's in their budget. We're, we're in good shape. So uh, I, I'm very happy about that. And uh, we have selected, you have selected a, a contractor. And we are in the process of negotiating that contract. And, uh, and then Two weeks, April 2nd, we'll invite all of the teachers from both the middle school and high school and y'all 
out to the property and we'll have some uh, plans and also people can kind of get a good idea of where they'll be and what they'll be doing in the afternoon of April the 7th. Any questions? Common Core is now kind of got a name change now. The best I would call it is Common Core was tweaked. And, uh, but it is called the Florida Standards now instead of Common Core. But the big, the big thing I think is that we don't have the pressure to use a national curriculum, that we are in control locally. And uh, I think that's a, a big plus that came out of all of that hoopla that went on about Common Core. That's a, that's the biggest thing. Anything else? On the textbook adoption changes, um, does that affect us greatly bringing it back down to the district in a positive or negative? I think it has pros and cons yeah. to it. And of course, as we move into the digital phase, uh, there's not enough money here regardless. And, uh, but the having, having total control over your textbooks, to me, that's that's good. <coughs> Levy County, that's good. Uh, knowing, knowing that they that these textbooks have not been vetted in the future to where they cover the standards, you know that will be tested. That, that's that's a, a con. So there's pros and cons to it, but overall, I'm, I think I'm in favor of it. Mm -hmm. it, it Part of my understanding of it is that even though we will be allowed to pretty much determine which, we still will have to provide them with, whether it be a digital, as you said, or the hard copy. But is that the correct direction? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. We make the choice, but we still have to buy the choice. Absolutely. Or provide the choice. Yes. And, and as always, uh, the state does not provide enough textbook money for for whatever adoptions up uh, for us to fully <coughs> put it, implement everything in there. Yes, sir. Mr. Grayson, can you just give us a little update on our little thieves that broke in everywhere? They have broken in all over Bronson, and uh, the churches have all been hit. The uh, the high school was hit a couple of weeks ago. They they came in the this this office last week. Uh, they didn't do any damage here like they did at the churches and all. But they uh, they did come in and search everybody's desk drawers for money and all. And, and uh, they might have got four to fifty dollars from here, but that's basically it. They tried to break into the bubble room and kick the hole in the ceiling. But uh, of course they, they couldn't get it in here, so Mr. Alexander's uh, group of hats to hold the ceiling. We're as good as new, except for people have lost a little money out of their desert drawers. Y'all didn't find any DNA, but they stepped through them, skipped their legs, and kind of plenty of trouble on us. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think they, the Sheriff's Department has a good idea who it is, but they don't have enough information to arrest and prosecute. I do too. They're just all over town, yeah. breaking in everywhere in Bronx. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to really uh, get Mr. Gibbs and Ms. Apple to encourage those teachers to come out here on April 2nd. All the teachers, uh, you, know, you know, please, if you don't mind, say something to the tree principal before we get the teachers out here on April 2nd. We, we certainly will. Be cool. We're going we're gonna to provide some refreshments out there. Somebody's going to provide refreshments out there. Say, well, yeah. Somebody's going to provide refreshments. We're going to get a couple of buses to provide transportation. So, but, and nobody, that's an early release date. So, nobody has an excuse not to. And so, well, we, we will encourage the principals to encourage the teachers. Because they, they need to know kind of the, the layout and how it's going to work. That's April 2nd, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are we 
Are we going to meet at the school like at 1 o'clock, 1.30 and have them out there by 1.30 or 2 o'clock? Uh, we haven't had that details now. Yeah. Uh, I know we're going to have a session that's morning in contract negotiations with the bank for Rich. So uh, I don't know if we're going to meet there or there or how exactly we have to go ahead and lose the Rich. Any other questions from the Board of Superintendents? Thank you, sir. Okay, time for board comment. Uh, Commissioner Turner, do you have anything for us? Uh, shared with you a memo following up on the question from the last meeting. If anybody's got any more questions for me, I'm happy to uh, help. I, I, I have a question here. Yes, sir. Uh, question number three, and after, after number three, I. For right now, the district can require a written waiver. Oh, they don't okay. care. They can. They can require that, although that's subject to being challenged. Maybe it's the way to say it's a little bit on thin ice, whether that's going to stand up or the student challenges it. But for right now, the state of the law is a written root, uh, waiver can be required. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Mr. Dad? Uh, I don't really have anything on thing. Uh, a couple months ago, we did a follow up on the uh, fast forward. I'd like to come up with something else. I mean, maybe like the uh, what we bought the gas pump thing. Follow up on how oh, make fuel yeah, yeah, we. I'd like to that. That will be uh, presented during the summertime. Fantastic. Uh, we're, we're going to do a total transportation uh, thing, and then also in the summertime we'll do one on maintenance uh, and give you a, a good indication of square footage that we air conditioned in this county and the <coughs> uh, uh, yards that we mow, keep mowed. I, I think all of that's very important that you understand and, and you can pass on when somebody said, you know, they're not doing Yankee County Yard enough. And the, well, they got 800 acres to mow and it takes a little bit more than four days to mow 800 acres what we work at. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how else feels, but I like the idea of getting uh, a uh, uh, follow up on the things we did. Yeah, and, and we, uh, even like this presentation today, we try to do some type of presentation every month to give you all some information on what keeps us in the game. We will. That's all I got. It, it's in the works. They're working on it now. Good enough. Throw the nutrition, how our free lunch and how that's going on. So I'd like to be curious to know about six months into that, how, whether we're breaking even, whether we're ahead behind. So, uh, the other thing is uh, on last Wednesday, the CDP FFA had a garden expo, <coughs> and they have been awarded a $6,500 grant from the National FFA Foundation. And that's basically to help with sustainable gardening and, uh, so they did that and they're still providing quite a bit of food to the food bank down in TRT and then they also had a leadership retreat with the uh, state FFA president and the area vice president out on Seahorse Friday, Friday afternoon Friday evening stayed out there and y'all were able to we brought them back so my daughter made it back alive so she she, uh, she did say that they uh, had an interesting evening so somebody thought they saw some ghosts <laughs> so, they all spent the night out. They all spent the night out. Wow. Nice. <laughs> but really proud of them for that grant that uh, they got awarded. And quite a few. they've got probably about five different gardens going on around the you know, school there. They've got different things. They've got quite a bit of mustard greens. And so now they're doing cucumbers and green beans and some other things. And we've got an animal in the fair. So we've yeah. got an hog in the fair. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, and some mullet. And some mullet. So, um, very good. Thank you, Ms. Cal. Ms. Um, I will be one of the fairs tomorrow. Um, and I guess, is it only one animal you don't have? So it's this, this, horse, this child, yeah, right? Yeah, we have a horse that they rode in. Uh, okay. yeah. And uh, not only one animal, I think it's kind of hard usually 
way to fare for Cedar Key, but you know, if, if it's possible, it'd be good to buy Cedar Key since we've never bought theirs before. But um, so the first year they've had one. No, they've had no, this is the third or fourth. This is the third for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The first year they ever had one, they announced it. We just went out of sight, so that wasn't a possibility. But if not, then it's Williston's turn. Uh, um, so I'll be there for that tomorrow. I don't want to care about not wasting time now. Because we've never bought from Cedar Key, and it would be Cedar Key first to be fair if it's affordable. If it's not affordable, then we'll go to Cedar Key. Then if Willison is not affordable, then we'll go to the chief one of the <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brooklyn Dyer. I did what I wanted to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> but anyway, and, um, and we appreciate you doing it. <laughs> yes, do. Then I'll join you in Tallahassee. Thank you. That's all. Mr. Kerr, a couple comments. I would definitely be in favor uh, if it looks promising going forward to require these uh, students to bring a waiver, a waiver from the parents before they opt out of the future. I, I think that's what most of our principals do. Uh, it's required. They do now? Yes. Okay. Right. That, that's part of the group. The second thing is uh, we were talking. Uh, superintendent about the uh, standardized testing and stuff and getting so much uh, attention and money and looking at how the standardized testing affects the school students district and I still will maintain I, I would rather see all of these efforts go more into the creation of a better not that the one's not doing enough okay right now of a better measure of a student's yearly progress and that be a determining factor on teachers, school, district. And that's my soapbox for the morning. Thank you very much. The, the student growth is, I think, very important uh, part to but, but we're not hearing that much of you know, they say there's so many things wrong with how we were doing it, how we're doing it now, it doesn't get a this and it doesn't get that part of it taken care of and yet you don't hear of any real research for the superintendent in the direction like they talk about the um, new standardized high state test. I'll get it from you talk to you. Well, I'm not, well, <laughs> this, well this, is this a criterion reference or your own reference? Well, this, this is the problem. Two years ago we were doing the FCAT test and then for the last year and a half, two years, we, we've been doing FCAT 2 and counting this year. And then next year we'll go to the new air test. And so how do you have any continuity in determining student growth when it all changes? And in the meantime, we've changed cut scores. And, you know, so it, it becomes not good way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you have any credibility in your results? Right? Yeah. I agree with that. I, I believe that everybody should should be held accountable for the work they do, and teachers, administrators, all of us. But uh, how to do that with the changing of everything every year? Very difficult. I agree with you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rankings. Okay, I don't have, I have nothing really. I just would like to, once again, I'd like to see a little, some work, or I know, you're, you know, I know we're getting some more on the leadership vote in our county, but, you know, I mean, I'll keep talking about that until I die, but uh, we'll move on. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none. Meeting is adjourned.